or Arabic text, it is one of these three categories. Okay, you may recall from SARF class that we also talked about this, right? We say that, okay, if you remember, I drew the chart here. I said, Kalima is divided into S, Fa'al, and Harf, and then we give examples and definition and everything, right? So, and you may be asking yourself, well, Shaykh, you are repeating yourself, right? <laughs> You're saying the same type of stuff. No. Let me tell you why. See, from now on, sometimes you may see that we are covering the same type of topics, right? In Sarf and Nahr. For example, we talk about Fa'il, right? The word Fa'il or Ismul Fa'il, right? In both Sarf and Nahr, right? But we talk about that topic from different perspectives. For example, uh, you know, I gave this example, so let's talk about it. Fa'il, right? Ismul Fa'il. Some t in, in, when we talk about fa'il, the word fa'il, means, which means a doer, doer of something. Uh, when we talk about it in sarf, we talk about how we make a small fa'il, right? We say that, for example, any root uh, word, any original root letters that you put into this pattern, you get, um, uh, you would have the small fa'il of that root letter. So, for, ex for example, you would have nasir, darib, qatil, you know, like that. If you put the original letters into that pattern, you would have a small file of that original letter, original word. So, in Sarf, we will talk about a small file from the perspective of how we can make that, right? Construction of word. Remember? We talk, we talk about how we can construct, how we can make a word. In Nahw, when we talk about a small file, we'll talk about how to make, sorry, what effects would Ismul Fa'il have on other words in a sentence, right? Let me repeat that one more time. When we talk about, for example, Ismul Fa'il in Nah, we will, we will learn and study how or what type of effects would Ismul Fa'il have on other words in a sentence, right? So we talk about one topic, right, but from different perspectives. In Sarf, we talk about the word structure, in Nah, we talk about how uh, would it affect other words in a sentence, and uh, you know, we basically zoom out, uh, not zoom in. In Nah, we zoom out to and see the whole sentence together, and we see how the words are related in a sentence. Okay. Fastlon fil s. Now, here we are going to talk about s. S is a very important. Uh, topic in Nah, and we have to learn uh, what is S, right? We're going to learn about the definition of S. Of course, we already know a lot about the defini def definition of S from Sarf. Um, and then uh, we will talk about the indications of, of uh, S. What are the things that would indicate that indicate uh, that the word is a, is a noun? And then we'll talk about the different divisions within S. Okay, so what is S? Al Esmo okay, Fasnun Fel S at Tarif, what is the definition? Al Esmo. Remember, I told you I'm gonna remind you one more time. Don't forget to put the Arab as I'm reading, put the Arab, okay, put the Arab on the letters as I'm reading. Okay, Al Esmo Hiya Kalimatun Tadullu. على معنى في نفسها غير مقترن بأحد الأزمنة الثلاثة. Okay. So S is a كلمة. We know what is كلمة by now, right? Very good. So uh, that word is clear. So هي كلمة. S is a word. تدل على معنى. It indicates a meaning within itself. تدل على معنى في نفسها. It indicates a meaning within itself. If you remember from Sarf, we say that uh, we define that as, uh, as, as having independent meaning, right? This is basically a different way of saying uh, diff independent meaning, right? So basically, S is a word that has an independent meaning. It does not need any other words to uh, signify and glorify its meaning. It glorifies its meaning itself. It tells you the, its meaning itself. It does not need other words to come and signify its meaning. 
تدل على معنى في نفسها غير مقترن بأحد الأزمنة الثلاث. Now, so one number one, it has a meaning in itself. Number two, it does, it's not associated, it is not, pay attention carefully, is not associated with the time tense. It is not associated with the time, right? So, for example, the word Ali or Fatima, right? These words have a meaning within themselves, meaning that they have independent meaning, in other words, and they are not associated with time. You don't understand a time from time basically is not part of its meaning. Time is not part of the meaning of noun. So Ali, when you hear the word Ali, it indicates uh, it's a given name so you understand the uh, you know, you would remember a picture of a, or a face of a person or Fatima or Al knowledge, you know, when you hear or bait or uh, you know, which means a house, a car sky, sun, you know, anything like, like these type of words, they have a meaning in themselves and there is no time, and time is not part of their meaning. Okay, so that is S. Now, let me also mention this. Uh, some of you may uh, have this question in your mind that Shaykhana, you say that S is a word that has in the independent meaning with no time. So how about the word yawm or the word layl, what does yawm mean? Day, right? Layl, night. Is yawm as or fa'l or is layl, night? Is, a, is it a noun or a verb? Well, we look at the definition of noun, we see that it has a time, uh, sorry, it has an independent meaning, right? Independent meaning. So. It's either S or fail. Now, does it have a time? Is time part of its meaning? Remember, is time part of its meaning? I would say no. Why? Because time is all of its meaning. It is not part of its meaning. Unlike ضربه. Let me give you an uh, example from a verb so it would be easy to understand. Nasara, right? Means he helped. Nasara, the word, the verb Nasara means he helped. Now, time is part of its meaning, not all of it. So that is his verb. Because in Nasara, when you hear the word Nasara, what do you understand? Two things. One, to help, right? Helping, an action that is happening to help. And you understand that this action happened in a past tense, right? So past tense, in the past, is not all of its, is part of his meaning, right? So you understand Nasr, which means to help, and Madi, which is Zaman, the time, right? So time is part of the meaning of the verb, right? But you see, that, and that is verb. But S, in S, time is not part of, if you have a word, a given, uh, a word that that is indicating a time, day, night, today, you know, uh, here, oh sorry, not here, but like uh, one hour or two, or the, the words like this that we call them zarf uh, zaman in Arabic. If they are indicating a, a time, time is all of, it, all of the meaning, not part of the meaning. Okay, I hope, I think that is very clear. Okay, let's move on. Now, alamatuhu, what is the indication? This is important. Now, we learned about S. We talked about it in Sa'ad, we talked about it in Nah. Now, what is, uh, you know, what are some indications of S? You know, how would we know that the word is S? Now, by these, inshallah, we're going to study this today. And from now on, when you read Quran, when you read any Arabic text, try to catch, right? words, uh, na uh, nouns, or S, underline, you know, that would really help. For now, for example, let's, let's go uh, talk about it, and then I will tell you, I will give you an assignment to do for, uh, to practice this lesson, inshallah. Okay, alamatuhu, what is the indication of S? Number one. جواز دخول ال جواز دخول ال التعريفية عليه. Number one, 
it is permissible to have al. Now, in what cases it would get al, in what cases it does not get al, that's something that we, we will study uh, in this book. But for now, you would know that any word in Arabic that you see it has al, al kitab, al Quran, al bayt, right? Uh, any word that you have, you see the, the, uh, this alif and lam, the harf of alif and lam before it, you would know that it is, it is what? S. So this is an indication of S. You, alif and lam never comes before a verb or a particle. Remember? Say so that kalima is either S, fa'al, or harf, right? So we are trying to give you some indications so you can differentiate between S, Fa'al, and Haf. جواز دخول التعريفية عليه Number two, ولحوق التنوين Number two, تنوين can be added to its ending, right? Now again, in what cases it can, in what cases it cannot, we will talk about it in this book, but you would know that any word that you see it with تنوين, it is a now, for example, so Al Kitab is a noun because it has Alif and Lam. Kitabun is S. Why? Because it has Tanwi, right? Very good. Arabu al Jarrabi. Arabu, you know what's Tanwi, right? I'm sure you know. An, in, on, right? You know that. You would, of course, you know that from. Uh, learning Quran and reading Quran. Okay, so Tanween, any word that has Tanween is S. Also, Arab al Jarrabi. You know that we have three types of Arab, three types of uh, vowels, right? A, A, O, Fatha, Kasra, and Dhamma, right? Now, verbs can be Maftuh or Magmum, right? But they can never be Maksur. They can never have jar. Only nouns can be majroor. Nouns can be maftuh, marfu, or maksur. So having kasra is, uh, is something that only nouns have, right? And you would never find uh, a verb that has kasra. So for example, if you see a word like bayti, uh, you will see, you will know that this is S. Another indication of S is وقوعه منادى وقوعه منادى ومسندا إلي If you, uh, that S can come after uh, حرف النداء Particles of نداء نداء means to call, right? So a word that comes after harf nida or the particles to call, particles of calling, like ya, right? Ya Ali, ya Ali, ya Fatima, ya Hassan, ya Hussein, ya Mahdi. Any word that comes after the, par the particle of calling or ya is called monada, and monada is always s. You can never have a verb or harf after particle of nida so you don't you do not you never say ya nasara <laughs> right you never say ya daraba you say ya ali ya fatima ya mahdi okay next one is musnadan ilai but this is the next uh, indication of s wa waqu'uhu musnadan ilai and also an, another indication of noun or S is that it can be subject of a verb. For example, you say Qama Zaydun. Zayd stood up. Or Nasara Zaydun. Zayd helped. Right? The word Zayd, which is the subject or the doer, the one who is doing the action of standing or helping, would be the, would be S because this is an indication of S. You know. Uh, anything that is that can be put as a place of as the place of subject in a verb in a sentence it is s a mudafan another indication of s is that it can be mudaf what is mudaf 
Now again, this is another section, a big section, inshallah. You know, and each one of these terms that you're learning here, they have their own section and chapter to talk about now, and you're just being introduced to it. Uh, uh, so, S, we say that it can be mudaf. What is mudaf? The word, for example, we say kitabu Ali. Book of Ali. Right? Book of Ali. We call kitab mudaf and Ali mudaf and Ali. Why? Because we say that kitab is added to the word Ali. Kitab is added to the word Ali. So kitab is mudaf and Ali is mudaf and Ali. These are the terms that you will learn. Uh, kitab is added to the word, to the next word Ali, and kitab is uh, mudaf here basically, right? Uh, you know, like for example, in English, you would say the book of Ali, house of Ali, or the car, car of Ali, right? Uh, that first word is called mudaf in, in Arabic, and that is an indication of esm in Arabic because that is uh, the only thing that can be mudaf is s. And muthanna, muthanna means dual. Uh, you can make s dual, right? For example, you say kitab kitaban. Two books, right? وَمَجْمُوعًا You can make a plural. How do you make uh, kitab plural? You would say, for example, kotob. Uh, or, for example, you say dhar, or, uh, and that would be dual, which means two people who hit, or nasrain, two people who are, who are helping, two helpers, basically. And nasirun, uh, which means helpers, right? Helpers in plural. وَمَوْصُوفًا It can be described, right? Sufa uh, in Arabic is a term that we use for adjective. And mawsuf is the word that is being described. For example, if you say, كِتَابٌ جَمِيلٌ Beautiful book, right? Uh, or for example, you say, بَيْتٌ جَمِيلٌ A beautiful house. Beautiful would be the adjective kitab or bayt would be mawsuf because it is the word that is being described. And uh, again, uh, that is another indication of s any word that is be, that can be described is uh, a noun or s uh, 